Right now, a former New York City police detective is being remembered after dying from 9-11 related cancer. The family of Luis Alvarez is speaking about his legacy outside of his wake in Queens. Let's listen in. Senate heard his message and that he will have died a happy man for his efforts for the World Trade Center Fund for the Victims' Compensation Fund. I can guarantee you that if we need to go down there again, I will go down there again. I will have my brother's hat. I will have his coat. I'm a retired detective myself, and I will keep going until his message and his bill gets passed. Once again, today we mourn, tomorrow we bury our brother, and after that we think about the message that he left for all of us. Once again, on behalf of the family, thank you very much for giving him the runway and the avenue to get his message out for his fellow first responders. It wasn't only about the cops that he worked with, it was about the firemen, the EMS worker, it was about the construction workers. When he went down to Washington, D.C., he was with the widow whose truck driver husband had just died of brain cancer, who was proud to be trucking the debris out here so America could get back on its feet. We had a young student at the time, she's in her 30s now, who was at Stuyvesant High School, who was told, hey, Two weeks later, it's okay to come back to school, and her and her classmates, some of them have gotten sick. So it's not only about the, you know, the cops, the firemen, and the EMS workers. It's about the, the workers down there. Way before the first military plane was up, FDNY, NYPD, EMS had boots on the ground. And when their guys were going down, they had more people coming in behind them and they kept coming and nobody said or worried about what they would do they just knew they had to act for the people there they didn't ask if they were republican democrat or where they stood all they knew it was humanity and they had to do something and they did my brother was one of those people i ask you to keep putting his message out there thank you very much for this avenue Now we're going to hear from David Alvarez, uh, Lewis's son. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, it's a really difficult time having lost my father. Uh, but he was at peace, and I was at peace knowing that uh, he was happy with everything that he accomplished. Before he became a hero across this country, he was always mine. He was always a man that I looked up to, who inspired me, who taught me to be the man that I am, to always stand my ground and to keep my head up high. So I remember my father the way I will, but I also appreciate the memory that the rest of the country will hold of him. This brave man, this steadfast, stubborn man who, despite 69 rounds of chemo continued to fight and continued to use what voice he could to get his message across that this is a bipartisan issue this is a simple issue that uh, we all need to come together we all need to uh, take care of each other and we need to care especially for those first responders who gave up so much of themselves who gave up their lives uh, to help this country get back on its feet after 9-11. Thank you. We're now going to hear from Michael Alvarez, who's Lewis's nephew. My uncle is a great man, and uh, while everyone the last couple months has seen him as a hero and seen what he did, did, I just wanted everyone to know him like I knew him, my Uncle Lou. He was just a normal guy, and he did what he had to do. He was a great man, but he was just a man, and all he did, we didn't see it like that. He was just my uncle. I'm pretty sure he gave me my first sip of beer, told me inappropriate jokes. That was him. That was how I saw him, and for him to do this seemed crazy to us, but he just kept going, and uh, yeah, 
just keep his message alive. He was just a normal man that did this, so anyone can do this, and that's what he wanted. He didn't want to be a hero. He didn't want his name plastered everywhere. I'm pretty sure he hated that his name was plastered everywhere. But, uh, yeah, just keep his message alive. Thank you. I'm going to bring all three detectives up from the uh, retired detectives up from the NYPD bomb squad. Tell us your name, please. Certainly. I'm uh, Brian Sampt. I'm a retired member of the NYPD Bomb Squad. Tell us about Lou. I've known Lou for 27 years. Worked in narcotics with him. Worked in the Bomb Squad with him. Worked in the government with him. Lou's a very quiet, humble person who was always the first one to help anybody, whether it was at work or in his off time. Uh, all of this is not Lou Alvarez. Lou Alvarez does not like his name out there. He does not like any type of recognition for anything he's done. This was so unlike him to to come out in the public and, and discuss his personal business and, and the things that Lou was going through. But he was so concerned, once again, about everybody else and about everybody getting checked and everybody... Uh, he was concerned about their health to make sure everybody else lived. Um, and, and that was one of his biggest things. He was so concerned about helping others, even while he was fighting for his life. Just, when you saw him speaking out, it's uncomfortable. What has it made him? What did you think? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It's uncomfortable as he was speaking out when you saw that. I saw it very unusual for Lou, because he is such a quiet man. But it didn't necessarily surprise me because of his character and the type of person that he was. And the type, like I said, he just wanted to always help others. And I think that's why he stepped up. And even though he's uncomfortable speaking to people and talking about his own personal business, he did it for others. And I think that's what it allowed him to do that. Take any questions now on point? Do you feel, do you, what do you feel his legacy needs to be? And are you confident that Congress has heard his message at this point? Uh, I, I am hopeful Congress has heard his message. Part of, part of Lou's legacy, besides his three boys, is, is how he's helped everyone else, how he's hurt, helped all the first responders, everybody who has worked down at Ground Zero. Phil, you know, we've seen a lot of Lou since he's been sick. Tell us about Lou before he was sick. My brother Lou wasn't even the loudest out of the four of us. Uh, I'm the oldest. I have a second brother, Fernando. He was the youngest boy, and we have a baby sister, Heidi. Uh, we were all within uh, seven, eight years. Uh, we grew up together. Um, we, uh, the three boys were born in Havana, Cuba, where my parents brought us to he here for the freedoms this country provided us, religious freedom, freedom to be able to just move about. Uh, this country has provided everything my father ever dreamed about. And Lou just was, he marched to his own beat. He wasn't a loud guy. He came home one day and told mom and dad he joined the Marine Corps because he wanted to go uh, in the military. He was a Marine for uh, six years. Um, when he came back, uh, I think there was a time he brought home a motorcycle, and then he took the NYPD test, uh, and those were the big things in my brother's life. We shared a special bond. We were the two police officers in the family. I retired from the Suffolk County Police Department after 31 and a half years in January. Um, I retired to spend a little time with him. I knew this year, after 68, 69 chemo treatments, I knew this year was the year we either uh, turned the corner and we'd be fishing all summer and traveling all summer, or it would go south on us. Unfortunately, it went south on us, but he Zoomed the last month and we were so proud of him. We were so proud of him. It, it beats, uh, I, I wouldn't say it beats fishing because I'll always m miss doing those kind of things with him. Uh, we, lo we had a, a love for food. He loved to cook. He loved to cook for himself and for his uh, wife and his boys. Uh, he he just, uh, just a regular guy, just a regular guy that loved his, uh, his friends, loved his family even more. And uh, we're, 
which is sad, but at peace because he was at peace. He was at peace in the end that he had gotten his message out. We had guys like John Field from the Feel Good Foundation, John Stewart, who became a good friend. He was happy to join those guys. He was happy, uh, like Brian said, he was a quiet guy and he didn't like throwing a lot of information out there, but he was happy to get that message out because it would it was all about the guys and girls that were his friends at the beginning. They uh, first year they used to uh, make chemo appointments together, so four or five of them who had worked together could could have a little party during chemo day. As macabre as that sounds, he would go and uh, four or five of them would. Uh, make their appointments for the same day and just so they can have the camaraderie that he, he missed so much from the department. Um, I think there's only two of those guys left out of the five and those guys are struggling. Uh, so I ask your thoughts and prayers for all first responders that are sick. Uh, we were lucky to have him for the three years of his struggle. Um, we were lucky 10 days in hospice to have him absolutely lucid for nine days and be able to say goodbye, be able to talk to his wife and talk to his sons and talk to my parents, his mom and dad and, and brothers and sisters. And we had great conversations. We, we watched three Yankee games where they were kicking butt before they left for London. He enjoyed it. He had some of his favorite food that he was able to eat and he knew it was coming and I, we were so proud of him and he was so at peace and you know it was all his idea he told me call matt get him on the phone if ask him what's going on with after washington matt advised us that he was getting a lot of interview requests and but you know to take it easy and have him and he wouldn't have it he said let's strike while the iron's hot let's get keep getting that message out Let's get John Field in. Let's get John Stewart in. Let's get that message out. Um, and he knew he only had days, but he just wanted to finish the job that he started. I don't know if it was that bomb squad mentality that you can't really leave a job halfway done unless everybody's running the wrong way. Thank you very much. One more question? Is there one more question? How do you think so the question is, how would you get one more time louder? No, I, I just wanted to know, what, how do you think we would want us to remember? We've seen the fungus, the images of his final days. So how do you think How do I think Lou would want you to remember him? I, I think he said that in the interviews last week. He was just an under-the-radar kind of guy that fooled him. Okay. okay. Uh, my father would want to be remembered as a man who tried his best to raise his boys the right way. Uh, I wanted to be remembered as, like so many other first responders, as someone who rushed in without hesitation and would do it again in a heartbeat. I don't think my uncle would want you to remember him. I think he wants you to remember the message he sent out there. Like I said before, he, he knew he was just the man, so remember the message. That was the strongest part, because like we said, we've all said, he wasn't the person that wanted to be in front of everyone, and he probably would have hated this. So don't remember him. We'll remember him. We'll keep him in our hearts. You remember that message he put out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we were just hearing from the family of former NYPD detective Lou Alvarez, who died from 9-11 related cancer. His wake is today in Queens. We'll have more weather and headlines coming up right after a break. You're watching CBSN New York.